I'd just like to give a quick shout out to all those people subscribing to my channel. The Scientific Audio File is the fastest growing audio review website on YouTube. And that's for the dates April 2nd to April 3rd. And it's by percentage terms, not by total number of viewers added. So thank you so much. Now to give a quick background and context to the video we're doing today, about four months ago, Danny at GR Research decided to call out pretty much all audio review websites on YouTube saying that their rooms are crap and he's not gonna send them any speakers to review. And if you wanna review a speaker of his, you need to go down to his place in Texas. He called out a few specific audio review YouTubers and he did not call out the scientific audio file. Why? Probably because he knows that the scientific audio files audio room was designed by the great Bill Tuthill himself and therefore is acoustically perfect. Now, some of you have written me saying that when he did the video, I had less than 200 subscribers, so therefore he didn't even know who the hell I was, but we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on that one. Now, for the last four months, people have continuously written me saying, please do a reaction video to Danny's savage, vitriolic, and acidic attack on the audiophile review community. Now, before I give you my reaction to that, you need to be aware that Danny at GR Research and the Scientific Audiophile have nearly nothing in common. Now, Danny uses Tinker Toys to raise his cables off the floor. That's completely the opposite of the Scientific Audiophile, where we use custom-made Shinyato cable elevators that are specifically designed for our 11.2 inches spec of keeping your cables off the ground. Danny uses his own custom-made power cables for his electronics. Completely the opposite of the scientific audiophile where we will only use braided power cables. <laughs> Who uses not braided power cables and calls himself an audiophile? I don't get it. Danny served light beer to Chris at Vinyl Attack when he came down. <sighs> A Cabernet, anybody? A Cabernet. Danny lives down south. The scientific audiophile, we live up north. Danny lives with his wife. We live with our mom and dad. Danny makes his own speakers. The scientific audiophile buys our own speakers. So you can see we have nothing in common. And so people out there were saying, destroy him. Well, you're going to be disappointed because this video is in defense of Danny at GR Research. And then you're asking the question, why? Why are you defending him? Well, did you ever think for one second, it's just the right thing to do? It's the right thing to do. Jeez, what the hell is that noise? Mom, get off the floor. Oh, Christ. No, I'm not coming over there now. That's why I bought that little button around your neck. You just push it and 911 calls when you fall down the stairs like that. I don't have time for this. I'm doing a YouTube review. Get yourself off the floor or push the button. We had to change venues because my mom's whining in there about the pain she's in. Oh, I think I broke my hip. Congratulations, mom. You did what every other old person's ever done. Holy cow, we're trying to make a video. Okay, let's get back to the video. Now, Danny's video did not have the impact he wanted it to have, mostly because he spent 45 minutes with so many different ideas, history, and things like that. He wasn't staying focused on the issue, the rooms. In fact, the three reviewers he called out, he actually said it's not because they have the worst rooms, because these are three guys he can see himself hanging out with. He called out Gene at Audioholics, Andrew Robinson at Andrew Robinson, and Chris at Vinyl Attack. This is another thing that Dana and I have nothing in common, completely the opposite. I don't want to hang out with any of those guys. I would like to hang out with Chris's sister, though. So the scientific audiophile is going to do Danny's video correctly. Did you ever hear the old phrase, a song's worth a million words? Well, that's what we're going to do right now. We are going to play you the same track in three different venues, using the same speaker and the same microphone placed exactly in the same locations, nine feet away, three feet up in the air. And we are going to let you make the decision which room sounds best. The three rooms will consist of a completely untreated room, 
much like the picture you see here from Klipsch from their homepage. Yes, this has got to be one of the crappiest rooms we've ever seen in our life. And people actually aspire to listen to their equipment in a room like this. This is the kind of things that the audio community is telling you is preferred, and it's the worst of the worst. The RT60 decay time in this room has got to last longer than the Roman Empire. The second room I'm going to show you is what's called an accidentally treated room. The people didn't go out of their way to do anything with audio, but they put in some good things that help the audio out. Things like a very large couch and soft furnishings, carpets, um, upholstery, things like that. Something similar to the picture you see here. And the third room you're going to hear is a professionally designed room, much like the one you see here. Why? Because it is the one you see here. And this room is designed and built by the great Bill Tuthill himself. Now, there are so many specs that go into a quality room. I'm just going to throw out two quick ones. It's got a noise floor of 0 0.18, and it has an RT60 value of 0 0.32. So you won't know which room is which. We're just going to simply label the three rooms A, B, and C, and you'll determine which one you like the best, A, B, or C. So here are the results. B is the perfectly professionally treated acoustic room. If you pick B, consider yourself a winner. A was the accidentally treated room. If you picked A, you're a moron. And C is the completely untreated room. And if you picked C, I never want you listening to music again. Your ears are shot. So thank you so much for listening and watching this edition of the Scientific Audiophile. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. It's so much appreciated.